and Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> the Big Parade, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender, with this week's guest, Bill Pertwee, Edward Sinclair, Larry Martin and Pearl Hackner. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. It is early 1942, and the tide of war ebbs and flows. In North Africa, Rommel's successful counterattack culminates in the capture of Benghazi, while in the east, Hitler's aspirations founder on the frozen steppes of Russia. Meanwhile, in a quiet backwater of England, Captain Mannering, commander of Warmington-on-Sea's Home Guard, Sergeant Wilson and Mrs. Pike and her son Frank are enjoying an evening at the pictures. It has its uncomfortable moments. In Germany, the girls are along the way. Arthur. What is it, Ravis? Hold my hand. But... Very well. Oh, no. Oh, right. oh Arthur. Hmm? I think Conrad writes so romantic, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. He's rather like you in a way, sort of strong and masterful. Well, yes, I suppose he is. <laughs> Can't you uh, sit a bit closer, Arthur? Oh, you see, it's, it's not easy with the arm of the seat between us. Wilson. Oh, oh, yes, sir, yes. yes. Who is this film chap? Some sort of foreigner? I think so, sir, yes. I think it's disgraceful having German actors in films. Why couldn't they have got somebody British for the part? Oh, Arthur, just look at the way Conrad's holding her in his arms. Frank! Ooh, take your thumb out of your mouth. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Shut up, buddy. Sorry. Sorry. I say, Wilson. Yes, sir. Realise we're surrounded by courting couples. Mm. <laughs> this is great. It's like Hyde Park on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. They've got to go somewhere, haven't they? Oh, I really do think it's appalling the way people carry on in the cinema. Now, yes, is... yes, I do, sir. Yes, yes. Frank, will you stop sucking your thumb? No doubt about it. Public morals are going to pieces. Far too much permissiveness. I should be glad when the war's over, people stop doing this sort of thing. <laughs> this couple in front of us here. Hmm? Absolutely disgusting. And they're blocking my view of the screen. <laughs> Excuse me, my man. Mind sitting up, please? Oh, sorry, sir. Thank you. That's better. Good job Elizabeth isn't here tonight. Well, why didn't she come, sir? She, uh, she doesn't like the talkies. Oh, why not? The moment Al Jolson first opened his mouth and said, you ain't heard nothing yet, <laughs> she complained of a headache. She hasn't been back to the cinema since. Oh, well, that was quite some years ago. Yes, well, she's not a great one for changes, though. such a good film, didn't you, Arthur? Yes, I did, yes. Quite good. Mm. Yeah, Mum. Yes, Frank? Hey, that looks like Mr. Jones. Where? Well, just there in front of Mr. Mannering. What? Sitting all hunched up with his overcoat collar round his ears? Yeah. Well, it can't be. I bet you it is. Hey, Mr. Mannering? Yes, Frank? I think that's Mr. Jones sitting in front of you. What? You sure? Yeah, tap him on the shoulder and see. Yes. That's you, Jones. Uh, oh, good evening, Mr. Mandarin. Good evening. It is you. Uh, yes, sir. Th this is my friend, uh, Mrs. Fox. She's a widow, you know. Really? <laughs> Talk to you later, Jones. Oh, good. It's the news. I like the news. This is the Government British News bringing the truth to the free people of the world. The Prime Minister, taking time off from the pressures of Whitehall, inspects the men of the Royal Weymanster Regiment. He pauses for a moment to admire the regimental mascot, a beautiful white ram, Angus of Clyde. Look at this that magnificent the... animal, Wilson. Oh, yeah, awfully nice, sir. Yes. My Joe, that, that's given me an idea. Oh, dear, has it? I'll tell you about it later. 
Come on. we better report for duty. Do you have to go, Arthur? I'm afraid so. Come on, Frank. Oh, that's no fair. We haven't seen the Donald Duck yet. Oh, come on. <laughs> Pay attention, men. Settle down. Last night I went to the cinema and I saw something there that, that really made me think. Permission to speak, sir. Mm. That lady and I are just good friends. <laughs> what? Well, it's not my fault, sir. She never leaves me alone. She's always after a bit on the side, but I tell all my lady customers the same thing. If you haven't got the coupons, you can't have it. <laughs> It's against the law, you know, sir. It's against I the law. I wasn't talking about you, Jones. I'm referring to the ram. What's the difference? All right. <laughs> the regimental mascot in the newsreel. Now, as you know, there's a parade next Sunday morning of all civil defence and home guard units to mark the start of the Spitfire Fund Week. And I thought that it might be a good idea if we had a mascot. I'm not quite sure what sort of a mascot it should be, so I'm going to throw this idea at you and then you can kick it about. Spenreen, I've got a white mouse. What about that as mascot? <laughs> Don't be stupid, boy. Can't have a white mouse leading the parade? Of course you can't. You'd never get the collar around its neck. All right, boy. <laughs> hold on, hold on, sir. Now, what we really want is a symbol of power and aggression. Now, what about a Scottish golden eagle? Well, you've got a Scottish golden eagle? I have that. We well, never mentioned this before. It's stuffed in a glass case. <laughs> when it comes to that, there's a stuffed cart behind the bar at the anchor. Oh, I think we're going into the realms of fantasy now, Jones. We must have something alive and large. I've got a very large pussycat. <laughs> really? Well, I appreciate your suggestion, Godfrey, but I don't think we'd ever get a cat to march along smartly. <laughs> Oh. Something amusing you, Wilson. Well, I was just thinking, uh, perhaps the cat would follow Pike's white mouse. <laughs> hey, I'm not having that, Uncle Arthur. The cat might eat it. Wilson, this is a serious discussion, and you're supposed to set an example. Well, with everyone making ludicrous suggestions, I didn't think one more would hurt. They may seem ludicrous to you, Wilson. This is a democratic, open discussion. Now, are there any more ideas from Aspet? Well, let's consider the platoon motto. What we have, we hold. Let's see if, see if that gives us anything. What we have, we hold. Yeah, how about borrowing that sign from outside a pawnbroker's shop? Walker. <laughs> if you make one more stupid remark, I shall order you off the parade. Just, uh, I, I just had an idea... I hope it's a sensible one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, we saw them using a ram as a masker, didn't we, in the newsreel. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Well, why don't we use a ram? Mm hmm That's good thinking, Wilson. I mean, there's, there's only one thing. Where are we going to get one? Well, I think I might better help you there, Mr. Manley. Uh, don't you remember my friend, Mrs. Prentice, who has a farm? Has she got any rams? Oh, she's got a few. Mind you, they're rather peculiar at this time of the year. <laughs> Fraser? Aye. Why are they peculiar? Well, as you said, laddie, it's the... Oh, God. It's the time of the year, the time of the year. <laughs> what time of the year? What a time when they're after a bit all of... All right, all right, Walter. <laughs> Don't you tell that boy anything. Now, Godfrey, do you think Mrs. Princess would mind if we borrowed one of her rams? Oh, I, I am sure she won't... If we can catch one, but I, I don't think it'll be easy. Oh, I don't imagine it'll present any great problem. Hi, hey, Mannering! Be useful exercise, you know, if we could... Mannering! Wilson, go and see what Hodges wants. Uh, very good, sir. Hurry up, Mannering. I can't wait around all day. Well, what is it, Hodges? I want to work with Napoleon. Is he busy? Yes, he is, rather. He's, uh, <laughs> he's trying to work out how to catch a ram. Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure that's going to help the war effect, isn't it? <laughs> well, we're going to march behind it at the parade on Sunday. Oh, that should make you all feel at home. You're used to falling like a lot of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Hodges. What do you want? It's about the parade on Sunday. No. You see this here? This is a plan of the procession, and your lot will be at the back. So you better tell them now. That'd be absurd. 
We're not at the back. We should be leading the procession. Look, mate, someone had to make the decision, so I've done it. And I'm telling you, you're at the back. But I spoke to the town clerk about it. On Monday, the Rotary Luncheon. Don't start coming that class distinction stuff with me, mate. We've got to be in front. I should be marching with a ram. Your personal life's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> what gives you the right to say that you're going to lead the parade? Simple, isn't it? Alphabetical order. What are you talking about? Well, we're ARP and you're home guard. And A comes before H. You want to go back to school, mate? Excuse me, sir? Yeah? Just go to me that, uh, as we're army, that's A. Good thinking, Wilson. No, yeah. no, you're not. You're not proper army. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. You see, we're, we're, we're army and you're ARP, so we're both A. Both A's, is that right? Mm-hmm. That makes us level. Right. So we take the second letter of army, which is R, and the second letter of ARP is R, so we're still level. Now we take the third letter of army... Which is M. All right, right, sir. And the third letter of ARP, which is P, M comes before P, so we're first. <laughs> Well done, Wilson. There you are, Hodges. If you're going in alphabetical order, we're first. Ask oh. what you think. You haven't heard the last of this. <laughs> oh, I suppose you think that's funny. Oh, well, just you wait. Just you wait. <laughs> first round to us, I think, Wilson. Yes. So, number one section will parade here tomorrow evening at six o'clock, ready to march to Mrs. Prentice's farm to catch that ram. Yeah, uh, Mr. Manorin, um... What is it, Walker? I've got an idea for our mascot. Yeah, have a look at this photograph. Mm. Well, I hardly think a scantily clad female would be an appropriate platoon mascot. <laughs> oh, sorry, a uh, wrong photo. <laughs> this is the one. A magnificent looking goat. Don't you think so, Wilson? Oh, yes. And look at that lovely white coat and those horns. Gee, oh, there's no doubt about it, man. It's a beautiful animal. Well, Mr. Mannering, what do you think? I can get you one just like that. Really? Permission to speak, sir. Won't we look a bit strange marching along carrying a photograph? Not a... (laughs) Not a photo, you silly old duffer of goats. You just leave it to me, Mr. Mannering. Very well, Walker. If you think you can get one... Mind you, it'll cost you. But I should think about a fiver. Should just about cover my expenses. Uh, I thought as much. Anyway, I'll leave it to you. Right, man, that's all. Dismiss. Blimey, Joe, is that it? Yep. I told Mr. Mannering I'll get him a mascot, and I've got him one. Oh, God, see. I've never seen such a scraggy mingy goat. <laughs> He's not very much like the photo, Joe. A swindle? That's what it is, Joe. A swindle? It looks like an old arse rug that's been chewed by rats. <laughs> it hasn't even got any horns. Oh, yes, it has. They're written under these little tufts of area. <laughs> now, don't worry, it'll be all right. We'll just tart it up a bit, that's all. You'll never get away with it, Joe. You promised Mr. Mann you'd get him a goat just like the one in the photograph. Oh, yeah, well, we'll have to make it look like the one in the photograph. Rubbish, how did he do that, man? Man, I'll go here any minute. No. You'll see. Here, Pikey. Yeah? Get those antelope horns off the wall of the vicar's office. Go on. All right, Joe. <laughs> uh, my sister Sissy once had her handbag eaten by a goat. You won't be carrying a handbag on parade, will you, Mr. Godfrey? <laughs> no, but uh, they eat other things as well. <laughs> See, by the look of it, it's been a long time since this year had anything to eat at all. Here you are, Joe. Here's the horns. So, now then, you watch this. We'll just stick these antelope horns on top of the goat's own horns there. Go, keep still, boy, keep still, keep the... Like that, now. There you are. They're all lopsided. Oh, no, but it looks like a heart track gone wrong. Huh? Look, all we need is a bit of fuse wire to hold them on straight. See if you can find some, Pikey. There's a good lad. Go on. OK. Well, even if you get away with the horns, Joe, what about its coat? Look, it looks as if it's been nibbled by nasty nannies. Look, hang on. I haven't finished yet, have I? Here we are. Now, I happen to have with me one genuine goatskin rug. There you are. Now, if I just drape it over him like this, stand still, stand still, will you? There you are. Look at that. Look. Now, I think you'll agree that the effect is quite ridiculous. Well, it's not what I was going to say. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in all my life, Joe. I have to admit, it looks a bit hard. Here you are, Joe. Here's the fuse wire. Thanks, Pikey. I'll just get these horns wired together and then we can... Very uh... well, Vicar. I'll just have a word with hey, you. Hey, look out. The verge is coming. Blimey, we can't let him see the goat. Quick, all, all, all of you make a circle round it. Go on, come on, come on. Oh, where's Mr. Mannering? Here, what are you doing with the vicar's horns? What? 
Oh, they fell off the wall. I'm just mending them. The vicar's <laughs> not going to like this, you know. He's very proud of those horns. He got them up the young barlow and barlow when he was a missionary. Was that before or after he got put in the cooking pot? Where's Captain Manning? I wanted to ask him... What's that smell? What smell? That terrible smell. I can't smell any smell, can you, boys? I don't I smell any smell, smell now. I shall have to report this to the vicar. Ah, good morning, Roger. Oh, there you are, Mr. Manning. I just wanted to tell you that the assembly point for the parade on Sunday is in the station yard. And as chief of the Sea Scouts, I will see that my boys will be there at ten o'clock sharp. Splendid, Roger. Right, we'll see you there. I must go now. I've got to see the vicar about a funny smell. <laughs> Extraordinary. Now then, Walker, did you get the goat? Well, uh, yes, I did. Where is it? It's here. Stand aside, lads. Let Mr. Mellon see the goat. There he is. What do you think of him, eh? I have never seen anything like it. How dare you? Yeah, well, I, I thought it might work. You told me that you could get a goat, Walker. You showed me a photograph of it, and I gave you five pounds. And you turned up with this this monstrosity. <laughs> I tell you, Godfrey, Joe's really going to get what's coming to him this time. Oh, dear. I, I was relying on that goat to lead the parade, and now you've ruined everything. I'm sorry, Mr. Mannering. There's only one thing for it. We shall have to get out to Mrs. Prentice's farm immediately and catch one of her rams. Right, men. Fall in outside. I really am sorry, Mr. Mannering. I'll tell you what... Here's your father back. Thank you. And I must say that I'm very disappointed. Well, I did my best. Yes, but how could you ever think that a wretched, miserable, moth-eaten creature like this... Don't wave that fiver in front of his nose like that. (laughs) Don't you know, don't you know, goats eat anything? Even fivers? Right, man, I'm going to leave this operation entirely in Fraser's hands. As you know, he's an expert in field craft. I gather you've already located a suitable ram. I shall have that. There's a magnificent beast in the field next door. Right, now you take Jones, Pike, Godfrey and Walker with you. Sam Wilson and I will stay here and observe. Right, my party, follow me. Quiet as you can, boys. I have the field glasses, Wilson. Yes, sir, here you are. Thank you. Just look at that ram. It's to the left of that thicket. Yes, I see it. Now, I get the feeling that it may not care very much for the idea of being caught. Oh, don't be such a pessimist, Wilson. Fraser knows how to do it. He's an expert at this sort of thing. Shh, no quiet, boss. No quiet. Here, the ram, no. Don't make a sound. Right, you are, Mr. Fraser. No. If we're going to catch this ram, what we have to do is to make it think we are perfectly normal. <laughs> That's going to be a bit difficult. Oh, dear. Oh, it's awfully fierce. Ah, oh, don't be a silly old soppy. Now, stand up and reveal yourselves slowly now. I've completely revealed myself, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> He's got to accept us as part of the landscape. Now, spread out and slowly encircle him. Then, when I give you the word, we'll move in and grab him. Right, off you go. Are they ready? Jones, Walker. Yes, yes. Pike, Godfrey. Yes, ready, ready, Mr. Mr. Fraser. Right, now, grab him. Got him! I've got him! I've got him! Sir, let go of my leg, Jonesy. Sorry, Mr. Fraser. Oh, where's the ram gone? Well, when we jumped in, he must have jumped out. Oh, Mind you, I'm not surprised. Oh, How would you no. like it if five lunatics suddenly jumped out on top oh, of you? Oh, blathering man. Oh, look, look. It's right across the bottom of the field there, near the river. Oh, Fraser. Oh, sir. Where's the ram? It's gone down by the river, sir. Well, get after it, then. <laughs> Never seen men so out of condition of you, Wilson. No, sir. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's shocking. Pike. Sir? Pike, you're the youngest. Run after it. Keep it in sight. We'll follow. Yes, Mr. Manry. Now, the rest of us are better spread out. We'll send more chance of catching it that way. I, I, I better follow Pike, sir. Otherwise, he, he might get himself lost. You mollycoddle that boy, Wilson. Mm-hmm. Very well, off you go. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Frank! Frank! Spread out, man. Work down towards the river. Frank! Help! <laughs> <laughs> 
Help! Good Lord, what's happened to him? Help! All right, all right, Frank, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uncle Arthur, hmm? is that you? Oh, please hurry. I'm sinking in the quicksand. It's all right, Frank, it's all right, I'm coming. Good heavens, how did you get in there? I just ran into it. Oh, help me, Uncle Arthur, I'm sinking. All right, all right, Frank, all right, all right. Now, now, whatever you do, whatever you do, keep, keep still. Keep still? I can't even move. I'm sinking, I'm sinking. Stop, stop, stop struggling, stop struggling. You, you'll only sink deeper. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out to you. No, don't come that way, Uncle Arthur. Oh, why not? Because there's a lot of barbed wire, you see. Oh, and you've... oh, <coughs> oh. Caught on this wretched barbed wire. That's what I was going to say. What? Well, why didn't you say it earlier? I can't get free. Oh, dear, what are we going to do? Is there anyone anything we can do? Help! 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 Any sign of the Ram Jones? I have to report, so I've not seen nothing. Help! Help! What was that, Mr. Mannering? Help! Help! There he is again. Help! Help! It sounds like an echo. It's coming from... Listen, sir, it's, it's coming from the other side of yon bushes. Quick, come on. Right, Mr. Mannering. Right, all right, sir. Good heavens, Wilson, Pike... Oh, how good as you've come, sir. I'm sinking, Mr. Mannering. It's up to my waist. Young Puck's in the bog. He's in the bog up to his waist. Don't panic. Don't panic. He's up to his waist in the bog. Be quiet. Hold on, Pike. Hold on? What to? Just hold on. Well, what about me, sir? This, this barbed wire is very painful. Don't be so selfish, Wilson. Just have to wait your turn. Now, we need something to pull Pike out with. Oh, Mr. Speak, sir, why don't we throw him a rope? Don't be ridiculous, Jim. We haven't got a rope. By the time we got one, it'd be too late anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I told you before, Wilson. You'll have to wait your turn. Not me, sir. I was going to suggest a way to help Frank. What? Well, of course, if you don't want it here. Oh, this is no time for sulking. The boy's sinking. Yeah, but I was going to suggest that if you lay your tickets down on top of the bog, you should be able to crawl across and get to him. Yes, good thinking, Wilson. Right, men, take your jackets off. Right, sir. Hurry up. Come on, hurry up. That's it. Right. Now I'll throw them onto the surface. Come on. That's it. Still not enough. Do you only have to take your trousers off? <laughs> Mr. Speak, sir, don't you think a rope would be less revealing? Oh, be quiet. Get your trousers off. Yes, yes, sir. With pleasure, sir. Would you like my, my flannel binder, sir? It, what? <laughs> my flannel binder. It's very absorbent. Oh, yes, anything, Godfrey. Come on, hurry up. Right, that's it. Oh, please, hurry up. The mud's up to my chin. It'll soon be in my mouth. Well, that ought to stop the boy complaining anyway. <laughs> All right, Pike, we're coming. Now, Walker, spread eagle yourself on those clothes. What? <laughs> Lie face down on top of the clothes. But, well, I don't know about that. Do as you told. If you produced a decent mascot in the first place, this would never have happened. Oh, all right, then. There he goes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, stand by. Ooh. I'm going to sit astride you. Sit astride me? No! There, oh. yeah, where we go. Oh, no! Oh. I've got a mouthful of mud! Stop complaining. Boy's life at stake. Right, Fraser, get hold of my left hand. Right, sir, here you go. Not free. Hold on to Fraser. Yeah, yes, Mr. Mannering. Wait, Mr. Mannering. I'm, I'm going. All right, Frank. <laughs> Grab hold of my hand. I've got, I've got it. Well done. Right, Fraser. I got trip. Heave, heave. Come on, Paul. It's coming free. Heave. It's all right down there, Walker. Good, good. <laughs> right, Fraser, got free. Another heave. heave. I saw this happen in a Tarzan film once. A man was pulling somebody out of a swamp and he got eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> Quiet, you stupid boy, and concentrate. He. Oh! I'm free! I'm free! Yes, yeah, all right. I'll make your way across Walker to the bank. Yes, Mr. Manning. Well, oh, don't tread on his face, you stupid boy. Oh, I am sorry, Joe. Fraser, don't you pull me in? Right, yes, sir. He. Oh, that's it. Mr. Manning? I should like to thank you for saving my life. May I shake you by the hand? Later on, when you've had a wash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hey, had we no better get Walker out? What? Oh, yes, yes. Right, get hold of his legs. Heave! Hey, Joe. <laughs> you look just like a Kentucky minstrel. <laughs> <laughs> you are, really. How very amusing. Excuse me, do you think somebody could possibly spare a minute to get me free now? <laughs> All right, Wilson. Fraser, Godfrey, go and give Wilson a hand out of the barbed wire. Right, you are. Come on, Godfrey. Uh, yes, Mr. Fraser. Well, soon I went free, Mr. Wilson. Well, that'll be a relief. Uh, I'll take this arm, Godfrey. You take the other one. Uh, very good. No. Pull! Oh. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Good heavens, Wilson. Look at your uniform. It's in shreds. Well, yes, it would be. I left half of it on the barbed wire. <laughs> you look dreadful. Well, if you pardon me saying so, sir, you're not exactly the picture of sartorial elegance yourself. <laughs> I don't come, Monnery. Mm. Where's Jones? I don't know. He was here not long ago. Mr. Manby, look. They're floating on, on top of a bog. <gasps> Good Lord. It's Jones's forage cap. Quick, Walker. Get down again on top of those clothes. Oh, blimey, not again. Go on, go on, son. It's for Jonesy. All oh, right, just for Jonesy, then. Oh, oh, oh. Let me get a straight walker, son, and probe around in the mud. I've got longer arms than you. All right, Fraser, but hurry up. Look at you. Here I come. Did you feel anything? I'm afraid not, sir. Sure. Nothing, sir. Nothing at all. All right, prison. Walker, you better get out. Give him a hand, Mike. Godfrey. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, oh. yes, sir. Oh, dear. Poor Mr. Jones. I can't believe it. I simply can't believe it. It doesn't seem possible, does it? I... He was a good man. Hello there. Oh. <laughs> I've got the rope, Mr. Manring. Oh, you're out, Pikey? Yeah. Well, what's the matter? You all look as if you've seen a ghost. Why didn't you tell us you were going for a rope? Well, he was busy. I didn't want to bother you. Why, is something the matter? No, no, Jones. Nothing's the matter. Nothing. Right, man, fall in. Yes, sir. It's a long march back to Warmington. All right, come along, Norris. Go on. Turn short. Thank you, Wilson. Squad. Lift. Turn. By the left, quick march. Left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. I do left. hope nobody sees us like this. Uh, we look like the only survivors of Pompeii. Carry yourself with dignity, Wilson. No one will even notice. Oh, Lord, look, there's, there's, there's someone who will. Look, look who's coming down the road. It's the Virgin, that dreadful Hodges fellow. Do you see what I see, Mr. Rogers? Yes. Yeah, look at them. Just look at them. Oh, yeah. Look at them. They're covered in mud from head to foot. Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> left, right, left, right, left. There's the warden up ahead, man. No doubt he'll have some clever, sarcastic comment to make. Take no notice. Don't you worry, sir. We'll treat him with ignore. Here they come, Mr. Rogers. Left, right, left, right, left. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, are you all right, Mr. Rogers? You've gone purple. You look as if you're going to have a heart attack. Oh, I've waited years for this moment, and now it's come. I, I just can't think of anything nasty enough to say. I can't. The mind is gone. A black the mind. The mind is gone. Ah, ah, ah. In that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Levitt, a Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Edward Sinclair, the Verger, Larry Martin, Private Walker, and Pearl Hackney as Mrs. Pike. The Big Parade was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowed and produced by John Dias.
Arthur Lowe, John Lemesher, Clive Down, and other members of Dan's army are now appearing at the Pavilion, Bournemouth. <laughs>